What's going on guys, it's Caleb here and this video is actually a remake of a video I uploaded about a day ago and I just really didn't like the way I sounded in that video and I think it can explain some points better um, that's why I'm just gonna make it again but if you have checked that one out you can totally just skip this one because the information is gonna be the same um, so what I'm gonna talk about in this video is typography especially typography for the web so if you're designing something on the website or on a screen in general um, this is what this video is going to be about. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys is kind of like my way to use typography in my work. Um, but if you don't know about my work, um, then definitely check out like my portfolio up here or in the description down below. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in. So there are five things that I'm going to talk about in typography. And the way I'm going to structure this video is to kind of separate things to um, body fonts and title fonts. Because, you know, when you're working on a design, um, definitely there are going to be these two things that you'll constantly be working with. The title is basically the H text and the body is the P tag. Um, so I, I think these two things has a little bit different uh, styling. And when you're styling the fonts, um, they deserve different treatment. So I want to separate them to um, to on, on each of these uh, kind of kind of things. So let's talk about fonts weight uh, for fonts weight definitely there are you know light fonts and bold fonts um, it's the kind of the thickness of a font so when we're talking about you know body fonts how would I use when I'm designing like what kind of thickness would I put on my body fonts so my kind of my rule of thumb is I was trying to stay away from things that are either too extreme um, so if it's too light too thin I will not use that um, for my body fonts because it's just very very hard to read or if it's too bold I think it kind of take away the attention from the title fonts or from anywhere around this because you know when you're working with a paragraph it's a lot of text a lot of content if um, the font is too thick, I think it just take you just grab a lot of attention. So I'll try to stay away from that. Um, so anywhere, if you're looking at that, anywhere like if you see a font is regular, um, medium or book, um, those are the sizes that I would usually use on my body fonts. So when we're talking about you know um, a title font, so I think title font is a little bit different because title font is generally is a little bit larger. Um, so you, even if you use a um, a light font on body uh, on title font, I think it's still okay. But just one thing to keep in mind is that like when you're using a title font, definitely make sure that you have enough size. Uh, your sizes definitely need to be larger for that. Um, title fonts if you're using a very thin font, let's say extra light, because if you're small, then it's very hard to read as well. So if you're using a light font for your title, definitely make it much bigger. Um, that actually require in a lot of cases, you know, if you're working for a kind of a family website or a writing website, you definitely don't want something to be super bold. So in that case, you usually need to use a lighter title fonts, but yeah, just make sure that it's large enough so it's readable. So um, talk about the next one is going to be um, the font size. So for font size, when I'm working with my body fonts, how many font size would I use, right? Generally, when I'm working with my body fonts, I'll choose somewhere between 14 point to 18 point. So anywhere below 14 point, it's going to be too small, too hard to read, or anywhere above that, it's going to be too large. And it's sort of like completing, like sort of like the size of a title font. So like as you can see on the slide right now, the left one is going to be what is uh, 14 and then 16 and then 18. So choose one that is, uh, you know, easy to read and you can also inspect a lot of other websites. Like how do you feel um, the font size on the other websites and, and what is good reading, what is bad reading. So it really depends on the, the thing that you're working on. If you're working on a, you know, um, a blog or a blog post and blog posts usually you just basically you want to focus on the content then you may want to have 18 point same as you know um, when you're reading on medium right medium they usually have a larger font size so for that purpose because reading is basically your only purpose for that blog page right so you really want to depend on adjust your fonts depending on the content you're working with um, so for the title fonts, um, title font is a much bigger range because you know title fonts you have H1 tag to H6 tag. So H6 is basically the smallest one and H1 is the largest one. So when you're working with that, right, I usually I choose between H6 maybe like you know 20 points um, all the way up to 100 points. But 100 points definitely on the very high end and I don't usually use 100 point or or beyond that because you basically just cannot fit the whole sentence on a, on a page without you know breaking the sentence too much so 
um, for the most part, I would stay, I would use maybe somewhere around like 15 point, like 50 point to 80 point for my H1 tag and all the way down to 20 or 18 uh, for my H6 tag. Um, so next is going to talk about contrast. So I think contrast is a very, very important concept in any kind of design that you work on. You definitely want to focus on your contrast on the page because that's kind of how you how, how it leads your attention to looking at things that you would like to tell the users to look at. So contrast is definitely a very good way to kind of make your design elements stand out. And I think contrast, you can definitely play a lot of contrast in your typography. So instead of me kind of telling you like how I usually do in my contrast, like how do, how do I make um, uh, my stat design stand out with type contrast in typography, I better just show you like uh, how other, um, how other designer, um, what other designer do in their design. So if you look at my first example here, it's a very good design from a very popular designer on Drupal. Um, so you can see that like he, he uses a very, very big and bold font as a title font. So in that case, right, you're definitely going to be looking at the, the title tag um, and then you're going to be looking at the, uh, the contents, the body fonts, and then the button, and then all the way back up to maybe the subtitle. Uh, the ready to send test. Um, so I think that is kind of like the visual hierarchy that this designer is gonna uh, wanted to tell you guys and lead your um, attention um, um, to look at things. So step by step, right? So without that, everything will be very bland. Uh, but by enlarging some portion of the elements, for example, typography, um, it's gonna make the page to have kind of like a hierarchy in it. So that is a very good um, representation of like how you can use typography um, to make contrast. So for the next example as well, um, it's another kind of like a blow up fonts on the left hand side. And then so in this case, uh, personally, I'll read um, the titles and then the uh, infographic and then back to the contents, uh, the body fonts and then the button. So you can see that, you know, uh, your, your, your attention is going to go from left to right and then back to the left. So this is, again, right, another example like how people use um, typography or page element to create the contrast and like lead your eyes to looking at things. Um, so for the next things I want to talk about is light height and letter spacing. So if you don't know about light height, light height is basically the space um, between the paragraph, um, between the rows in the paragraph. So the red part and letter spacing is the blue parts like the like the space between the letters itself. Um, so I think for light heights or letter spacing, it's basically just very hard for me to just give you a number uh, for this kind of thing because when you we're really talking about light height, uh, it really depends on the um, the the font sizes. So when you have a bigger font size, um, then definitely your light height is going to be bigger. So it's very hard for me to just give you a number, but I want you guys to kind of feel the difference. Um, so by looking at that, right? So what is too tight? What is just right? And what is too loose? So something that you have to train your eyes to kind of tell um, what is good, what is bad. Um, so once when you get there, right? Whenever you're working on the design, you can instantly tell that hey. This typography is some kind of problem. Like, how can I fix that, right? A lot of fonts is going to be good out of the box, but some fonts, they're not going to be good. So you have to manually adjust them. So let's move on. Like in other slides, it's going to be the letter spacing. So you can see that what is too tight, what is just right, what is too loose. So in my opinion, right, the one on the right is going to be way too loose because there's just a lot of gap space between the, the letter. So again, just feel it. What is good, what is bad, just feel it. Don't just look at my slide. Go on other websites as well, look at like how other people are designing on their things and see what is good, what is bad. And definitely follow the very popular designers out there because I believe that their work is great and you can learn a lot of things from their design as well, not just looking at my slide. And for the last thing I want to talk about is the all cap versus lower cap. And this is kind of like a design trick or techniques that I think a lot of designers they're using um, in a lot of things. So for example, you can see a lot of designers they're using all cap um, kind of uh, all cap characters in their title tag um, and then in their button as well and also like sometimes in um, the um, the the menu items. So why would they do that, right? Um, a very obvious reason is that um, for all cap characters, it's definitely more balanced than than the lowercase characters like sentence. So for all cap, right? If you look at my example here. I have two lines, um, one above and one below the all cap sentence. And you can see that all the characters inside that has an equal um, height to it. So 
in that example where I can basically see that like that sentence is like a break. So in that case, right, anywhere you put your all cap sentence in a place and you can make sure that that thing is going to look very balanced on the page and you don't have to worry about like one side is heavier, the other side is less heavy. So I think this is a very good treatment that I apply to a lot of my designs. Whenever I want to have kind of like a light break uh, in between two sections, I will put uh, some kind of um, um, all cap characters in that. And if you pay attention, this method is used by a lot of websites, a lot of places, YouTube use it, Facebook use it. Somewhere like you have like two lines and you want to put something in the middle, then you put an all cap sentence in that. I think this is something that like you, you have to experience. So that's it guys. Um, I really hope that there's something that you can kind of take away from this video and apply to your design. And if that is the case, um, definitely give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel as well. And for the next video, I think I'm going to talk about uh, shadowing and gradient. Um, so if you like those kind of thing, I'm going to put a lot of kind of example from other designers and we can like all discuss it and learn together. Um, so if you like that, stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.